Hey guys, thanks for joining me for another edition of Electric Avenue's YouTube updates. Today I'm doing the new releases for March 22nd, 2024. Uh, I guess it's uh, spring is here. Uh, keep getting asked the question, see on TV, are you better off now than you were four years ago? Well, four years ago I was closed during a pandemic as many people, most of us were. So I'd say, I guess, yes. Um, but anyway, let me get to the business at hand. Uh, I'm going to go through today's new releases. There are many. And uh, we're less than a month off from Record Store Day, uh, April 20th, 2024. So set your uh, calendars, your alarms. Uh, we open at 8 a.m. The line usually starts forming around in earnest around 4 or 5 a.m. but you know people start showing up a couple people around midnight so you know it depends on how much you want whatever is on that list that you're looking for but so there is a ton to get to as the month goes along so uh, and I'm gonna do a very short recommend today hopefully somebody said your recommends are starting to get kind of long so um, and I know other people might enjoy that but uh, uh, I got to keep these things balanced, and uh, as time goes on here, I may let some of that go away while I'm focusing more on the records that are here. So, all right. So today's new releases. First up, not really a new release, but a reissue, Allison Chain's Jar of Flies. Well, this is a record that we used to carry. Uh, it was packed with the SAP EP as well and um, Music on Vinyl was pressing them. And then overnight, January 1st of, what was it, 2020, I think, or so 2019, they just stopped making it. And I think it was 2020. And uh, so we haven't had it for several years. Uh, I assume Sony or Columbia must have reassumed the rights to the album and that was or they asserted like, we want you to cease and desist and we're gonna make our own versions of it, of course. So uh, here we are again now, it's just the EP by itself this time, um, instead of being packed with sap, so that way they can market that as a separate thing. But this does have, um, what, seven pretty iconic Alice in Chains songs. It's a little more acoustic-y, uh, but still rock than some of their other records. And this is the one that featured I Stay Away that uh, ended up becoming iconic on um, soundtracks and things like that later. But uh, Alice in Chains, probably, honestly, probably the biggest release of the week. Um, all right, some new stuff. Gary Clark Jr. This is his new record, JPEG Raw. And... Uh, supposedly kind of an experimental record. I mean, his last one was too. I don't know if there's really anybody in the blues genre doing quite as experimental and uh, interesting sort of records, mixing like hip hop and soul and stuff all in with the blues. But this is uh, pressed on bone colored vinyl. I should say the Alice in Chains was just black vinyl. Um, they had like limited versions of that that were either color or they had like little plastic flies pressed into them those sold out online pretty immediately so all the stores including indie stores like us we just get black vinyl but you'll get your Alice in Chains again anyway back to this this is bone vinyl and uh, features guest appearances from Maktub uh oh sorry song Maktub uh Alone Together featuring Keon Harold. What About the Children featuring Stevie Wonder uh, so you kind of, I see Valerie June listed here. George Clinton is on Funk With You. Uh, so if you like George Clinton, you might want to check out the new Gary Clark Jr. Um, all right. Exciting. Moving along. Uh, the new Waxahachie, Katie Crutchfield, Crutchfeld? Crutchfield. Uh, I don't know if I ever say that right. Uh, Tiger's Blood is the name of her album. She goes by Waxahachie since she sort of grew up in the area. Um, but uh, this is on Tiger's Blood clear red colored vinyl. Uh, that's the indie exclusive pressing. Uh, she's an artist who keeps gaining more and more traction and popularity with every rele release. 
we're actually having a listening party today for this album around uh, the end of the day. So, um, yeah, uh, check her out. She's kind of Americana type stuff, but very good. Um, many of you already know who she is. So, uh, let's see. Another great sort of Americana artist that I am just totally like fascinated by Adrienne Lenker and she's a member of Big Thief. She's the lead, lead singer, so I guess I'd call her the lead singer, and sort of main songwriter. Um, but this is her new album, Bright Future, a solo record. So uh, she's had a couple of solo records now pretty in pretty quick succession. This actually features the song Vampire Empire, which I thought was um, a Big Thief song, but maybe that's a different version of it. And uh, so anyway, looking forward to hearing this from Adrienne. Her last album, uh, so like Songs and Instrumentals, was really great. It just kind of was, um, she's such a like an intimate type of, um, I don't know, artist, writer, folk person, but very, very real with her writing. Uh, and another great sort of singer-songwriter here, Sierra Farrell, Farrell, Farrell. Uh, this is her new album, Trail of Flowers. This is the indie record store exclusive on limited edition Candyland vinyl. It's like kind of a purpley mix of colors. Um, there's a great picture of her on the back. Uh, features the songs American Dreaming, Dollar Bill Bar, uh, Chitlin Cooking Time, and Cheatham County. So um, another, both of them, uh, this one also... I don't know if it, this one doesn't say what color pressing it is on the outside, but it's whichever version of Adrienne there. You know, they only allow us really just one or two choices because um, it's like you get what you get. You're an indie store. Here's what you get. Uh, but usually we get the cool stuff. So I don't know. It's a mixed bag, right? Um, new Zach Brown band. And this is not really um, an official sort of album album. It's a covers album. Uh, and it's From the Road, Volume 1. So these are live recordings, and uh, they do Bohemian Rhapsody, Baba O'Reilly, Enter Sandman, Sabotage, Sweet Emotion, Whipping Post, Margaritaville, um, etc. Um, so if you're into, uh, they do Use Somebody, Kings of Leon, uh, with a little help from my friends. So new Zach Brown Band. Um really excited about this looking forward to this for a while new jesus and mary chain um you might be if you're alive long enough psycho candy was their sort of breakout album back in what 86 or eight, something around that um pretty much known for being kind of uh um i don't want to say dissonant because they have such dreamy kind of music but it's, it's dreamy, but it's aggressive. How about that? <laughs> you get a lot of sort of fuzzed out guitars and the Reed brothers managed to patch up their differences. Again, add them to the list of brothers that weren't getting along. Black Crows, uh, you had uh, the Robinson brothers. You've got the Gallaghers that are still fighting. I think I mentioned this last week. So anyway, the Reed brothers patched up their differences and it's their first album in uh, I think 13 years Glasgow Eyes is the name of it uh, so they've been around for 40 years this is on transparent red vinyl um, and what I hear so far sounds great uh, they have a song called The Eagles and the Beatles <laughs> and uh, Mediterranean X Film um, Hey Lou Reed and Lou Reed is spelled R-E-I-D sort of like their last name is spelled R-E-I-D uh, okay, and another uh, album I'm really looking forward to, The New Elbow, and this one is called Audio Vertigo. This is the limited edition blue vinyl, and uh, I heard a couple of singles from this, and they were actually very, like, kind of upbeat and supercharged, and normally I think of Elbow being sort of uh, dreamy and kind of quiet, um, but uh, so far this seems a little more like they've taken a little bit of a turn. Um, can't wait to hear it. Sam Evian, his new album, Plunge. Is it Evian? Uh, this is, um, 
I think it's how many? His seventh album, maybe? The new album, indie exclusive, clear water blue vinyl. Um, and there's actually guest appearance on here from Adrian Lenker. So if you're into the Adrian album or Big Thief, you might want to check out Sam's record because she's on it. Uh, an artist that I find very um, interesting and uh, her last record was so mesmerizing, Julia Holter. Um, I think it's the last one where she, she sounded like she was kind of like, it's like, here I am walking down the street. And, you know, it's more of like, um, a, her stuff is very artsy, but uh, good. And this is on limited edition Calder Red Vinyl. It's called Something in the Room She Moves. Um, interesting sort of abstract painting on the cover and uh, yeah check out Julia Holter she's on vocals and keyboards on this album but there's a full band here I see synth bagpipes sax clarinet flute piccolo double bass fretless bass she uses a lot of instrumentation so um, let's see another interesting singer-songwriter Efo Donovan I think that's how you say that this is pressed on violet vinyl she's a grammy winning uh, songwriter presents a genre defying album about women's suffrage featuring the knights anias mitchell the westerlies and the san francisco girls chorus sounds very intriguing so lots of good stuff coming out this week uh, another interesting uh female singers a lot of women uh, which is awesome. Empress of, and this is her new record for your consideration. I don't know if I can show you the back because it's a little, it's a little racy. She's painted gold and uh, she's not wearing anything. <laughs> but uh, this is like I don't know. They've got this packaged in an interesting way. It's almost like a double record. But uh, this does feature guest appearances from Rina Sawayama and Muna. Uh, and this is on blue translucent vinyl. And um, I think she graduated from Berkeley School of Music. So she's another um, real musician that's out there. Uh, another sort of singer songwriter, there's a lot of, and female, Rosalie. Uh, and this is her new album, Bite Down. Bite Down, uh, this is on limited edition pink vinyl. Um, this person, Dan Bayar of Destroyer says, Bite Down makes me think about singers and bands that throw themselves hard into the storm the way the Rosalie Quartet does. The calm of her voice over the top of the band's raging, it is the emblem of the songs that live to put themselves in harm's way. But it's not harm, it's just that you have to play hard to get at these goods. So if you like Destroyer, Dan's giving a quote here. Um, I think they're from like North Carolina maybe, but uh, it's kind of a crazy cover it's a little creepy but uh, but but cool um and another sort of like uh sort of folk rock band bendig bendigo fletcher and this is on baby pink vinyl uh two things at once is what it's called so give them a look see on uh on the on the youtubes or the net if you want to find out more about bendigo fletcher um okay and then I do have some other new and reissue stuff. I should mention here right now, I'm just going to throw this in here because there is, uh, the vinyl is on the way. It will be here hopefully by Friday. Uh, but The Cure uh, Paris, this is the reissue of their live record from uh, the late, late eight, early 90s. Um, they had one last year called Show that was reissued. They were released at the same time. I think they were even released on the same day. Uh, show was more of kind of like a, a purely sort of like kind of more pop rock expression of The Cure. This Paris was a more kind of art artsy kind of concert. Uh, interesting, it features some tracks like uh, Shake Dog Shake, Play For Today, 100 Years. Uh, it does have love song. Um, Charlotte sometimes dressing up hot 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 so it's a different kind of Cure concert uh, but the vinyl is on the way I don't know why you know the Cure have been doing picture discs for all of these record store days and we're getting the top 
uh, the album the top as a picture disc this time why they aren't putting this out on a picture disc on record store day when they did show last year uh, but we're getting the regular black vinyl of it which i guess because there's been maybe complaints about it but they're still putting out a picture disc you know <laughs> you, this is when it's like um i don't know who's at the helm and what's what the choices what choices are being made all right this i think there's some people that have been waiting for this this is a uh, super limited so don't get your hopes up um there are i you know i only have a couple at this point they say that we're going to get them in drips and drabs for a while so you don't need to necessarily rush out and get it but the andre 3000 album that was released back in what around christmas uh maybe earlier it was his flute album i think it was from maybe before that uh, but this was supposed to, it was before that, this was supposed to come out on vinyl back in January and they finally put it out. Uh, this is, I don't know how many records is this? Four? Uh, I'm not really sure here. Well, if you can read the back, it's at least three records, I think. Um, not cheap, um, because it's three records, but, you know, what can I say? I mean, he's one of the greatest rappers of all time, not rapping, he's playing you know, African flutes and stuff. People say it's very pretty. I haven't heard it yet. So I'm not going to comment on that, uh, but I'm kind of interested. But uh, yeah, so the Andre record is finally available to purchase. Um, another record that I've sort of been looking forward to hearing, the new Alice Coltrane reissue. Uh, this is an album that was unreleased, hadn't been out before. Uh, a Carnegie Hall concert. And this is from, uh, what year did they do this? 1971, uh, features Pharaoh Sanders, Archie Shep, uh, and starts with Journey in Sacha Dananda. Uh, I think I said that right, but it's basically a four-sided record with each side being 15 to 20 minutes long. Uh, so new Alice Coltrane. Undiscovered Impulse put that out. Another jazz reissue, Herbie Mann, Glory of Love. Uh, this is a late 60s AM album. I think it's fairly difficult to find. Uh, he does uh, Hold On, I'm Coming, uh, House of the Rising Sun. Um, so it's a Unchained My Heart. It's a mix of sort of like different kinds of things. But if you like jazz flute, <laughs> it's all about the flutes this week, I guess. I don't know. Between him and Andre. Uh, let's see. And also, Chick Corea. And this is his album, Sardinia. This features the Orchestra de Camera della Sardinia. And I don't know if I said that even close for my Italian. But uh, this is a night. It says a night of Mozart and Gershwin uh, with him at the piano. So uh, he'll be playing... Uh, some classical stuff and then there's also uh, the well the Gershwin stuff I guess you know some people consider Gershwin a little more borderline jazz but he does Someone to Watch Over Me and Rhapsody in Blue uh, interesting to hear uh, Chick do Rhapsody in Blue a 26 minute performance of that and uh, pieces from Mozart Piano Concerto 24 so uh, and that was in C minor K491. All right, for you classical buffs out there. Um, let's see. Neil Simon's Murder by Death, the soundtrack by Dave Grusin. And um, this is uh, available on vinyl for the first time. His score to the star studded murder mystery, uh, featuring the original cover art by legendary cartoonist Charles Adams, pressed on clear vinyl on Varese Saraband. And uh, there you go, that's sort of the artwork. This featured Eileen Brennan, Truben Capote, Alec Guinness, Maggie Smith, Nancy Walker, Peter Sellers, um, David Niven, I'm just skipping around there. So interesting, Murder by Death. Um, kind of looks like, reminds me of like Clue or something like that. Um, this is kind of interesting, the new Stickmen live record is called Yumi Yumita. There was a record that they just put out earlier this month 
Uh, and then this is another sort of companion record to that. But this one is a double, so it's a little bit more uh, expensive, longer. Uh, Tony Levin on stick and vocals, Pat Mastelato and Marcus Reuter. Uh, this is recorded, recorded on the Tentacles Tour in Japan 2022. Um, and it says uh, they do powerful live renditions of their own songs and King Crimson's Larks, in, Larks Tongues in Aspic Part 2, Red the, and the Sheltering Sky and Level 5. Um, so anyway, Cedric Hendricks says, when it comes to this band, you know what you're getting before you start, and there's nothing wrong with that. Top flight talent takes on challenging compositions and owns them from note one. So there you go. Um, I know that there are prog fans that are going to really like that. All right. Hey. Wham. <laughs> Fantastic. George, R.I.P. George Michael. Uh, George Michael, Andrew Ridgely. This was uh, their first album. Uh, this is a reissue. I believe it's on Black Vinyl. Uh, this features uh, some of their early hits that were, I don't know, when they started, they were a little more disco-y. So um, it was kind of like the hangover from the 80s, but still, uh, George did so much of the music, and it was much more kind of like mixed with like an 80s sensibility like it kind of brought in the more uh heavy production of things like abc and uh, with the trevor horn sound but trevor didn't work on this but this features uh bad boys young guns uh wham rap enjoy what you do that song is like i cannot get that song out of my head and club tropicana which is they're more sort of like beachy kind of song but eight songs that was the George Michael debut, the first thing that he ever released uh, widely. And then this was the one that sent Wham! Mega, uh, Make It Big. And um, this was, what, 1983? 84. Uh, features Wake Me Up Before You Go-Go, Everything She Wants, Freedom, the original Freedom, I Don't Want Your Freedom, that one. And uh, Careless Whisper ends the album, so... Those are uh, four massive, massive hits and also features Heartbeat, Like a Baby, If You Were There, and the Risible Credit Card Baby. <laughs> no, I don't know. That's kind of a fun song, but, you know, it's, it's not the high point of George's career, obviously. I think he would probably have preferred, like, I don't know if I should have released that. All right. Another great reissue, Misfits. Uh, this is uh, the one, uh, I think it's just usually called Hits or something like that, but this is Glow in the Dark Vinyl. It's going to look great on your turntable, especially at Halloween. Uh, it's an RSD Essential. Uh, these were a little hard to get for a little while, um, but features She, Hollywood Babylon, Bullet, Horror Business, uh, London Dungeon, etc. So, woohoo, Misfits. You can't have enough of them. Hey, it's time for some butthole surfers. Uh, yeah, so there's three butthole surfers that uh, got released this week, uh, reissued. This one is the retrospective, 84 to 91. So if you don't feel like you need everything from that early, uh, I can't show you the back, really. Um <laughs> Anyway, uh, Butthole Surfers, this is sort of a retrospective, right? And uh, I don't know if this is on. I don't think there's anything special about the vinyl. So it's just been out of print for a long time. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. This one is actually an album. I say this is a retrospective. This is uh, Rembrandt Pussy Horse. <laughs> That's the name of it. Uh, and then this one, I'm trying to remember the name of. Uh, it might be self-titled. I don't remember. But... Uh, there's another butthole surfers <laughs> and uh, I wasn't really a fan of them at this point in time but uh, some of their later stuff I thought was interesting but and then uh, live PCP P E P PCP pep uh, yeah live butthole surfers uh, barbecue Pope dance of the Cobras the Shaw sleeps in Lee Harvey's grave Wichita Cathedral. I mean, Gibby was like, it was crazy. Okay. 
and you thought the flaming lips were crazy. Blink 182, Buddha, a reissue of this. This has been out a few times, I think, but this is on limited edition with a bonus poster and postcard. A Coke bottle, green vinyl. Um, early Blink 182. Told you guys there's a fair amount. Uh, early Guided by Voices. This is uh, same place the fly got smashed. Reissue of LP number four from 1990, a fan favorite concept album that includes Drinker's Peace, Pendulum, and other total bangers. <laughs> That's what the sticker says. <laughs> Who writes the stickers is what I want to know. There should be like a, a somebody like investigate that. We need an investigative uh, report. Him. Uh, this is a reissue of their album uh, Tears on Tape from 2013, now on limited, limited edition mint green marble vinyl. Uh, I think this was their last record, and then they broke up. Um, they also released a cool ooh, lenticular CD for that. So, uh, yeah, there's that. Uh, Shaka Khan, reissue of the Shaka album. Uh, sorely under underappreciated, so it's good that this is coming out. Uh, this is uh, features I'm Every Woman and Life's a Dance, the 45th anniversary of her debut solo album, remastered from the original master tapes. Well, which original master tapes, but still that's very cool. That record is, it's findable, but it's harder to find than you might think. Um, okay, this hits us kind of a soft spot for me. You guys are like, what? Girls Aloud, and this is their second album, What Will the Neighbors Say? Uh, you people in the UK know who I'm talking about, and you're probably like, really? He likes Girls Aloud? I mean, I think they're a great pop band, uh, pop girl group, put together by, you know, fans on a TV show to kind of go up against the male counterpart boy band. They totally like blew the boy band out of the water and had a great career. And um, then they started to go their separate ways about 10 years ago. And unfortunately, Sarah Harding, uh, we lost her two years ago, RIP to cancer, breast cancer. She wasn't even 40 years old yet. So that's just very tragic. But um, I don't know. The thing that I like about Girls Aloud, when I watch like some of their performances now looking back on like YouTube or wherever is the audience just seems to be having so much fun and they never really uh, got to America broke here. And it's a shame because I think America would have really liked them, but uh, they kind of kept them as something in England. So anyway, this features the show love machine. It also has great covers that they did of, um, I'll Stand By You, the Pretender song, and Jump, the Pointer Sisters song. Uh, they do them with a lot of spirit and pep. So, anyway, I know that they're sort of manufactured, but um, they were more the good side of the manufactured bands, not the ones that really annoyed you. <laughs> Although, they, I'm sure they had... If you lived in the UK, you might have felt differently about that, I'm sure. Uh, okay, and then there's some music on vinyl things that came out this week, too. Uh, the new Indigo Girls reissue, uh, music on vinyl. This is the one featuring Closer to Fine that was featured so much uh, recently in the Barbie movie. So that's very cool. We needed that. The world needed that. Uh, Alice Cooper, Trash. Uh, this is 35th anniversary, 2,500 copies on translucent blue and red marbled vinyl. I think this is one of Alice's better uh, mid-80s type records. Uh, they're all numbered, and this features Bon Jovi, Richie Sambora, Steven Tyler, Joe Perry, and Kip Winger. So, um, I don't know, I didn't see if the... Uh, this one's just a black vinyl, but uh, we'll take it. We need that. Uh, and then Sponge. Uh, this has been reissued before, but this one is the 30th anniversary, uh, 1,500 copies on red and black marble vinyl, Rotting Pinata. This was Sponge's uh, sort of breakthrough record. Uh, was it Cloud that was the hit? I'm trying to remember. It's been so long since I heard that, and uh, I wasn't really a massive grunge person. I mean, I don't know, you probably can't tell that. Idris Muhammad, 
uh, House of the Rising Sun, another music on vinyl reissue arranged by David Matthews. Uh, this is um, one of those like really classic sort of transitional albums from uh, early jazz into the kind of 70s type of thing. It's on that uh, Kudu label that uh, a lot of Grover Washington Jr. stuff was on. Uh, I see Patty, uh, uh, Patty Austin was on this record. Um, who else played on that? Leon Pendarvis, um, Eric Gale, Joe Beck, a few names that I recognize here. So um, David Sanborn. So you might want to check that out if you're into Idris stuff. And then Blue Oyster Cult, Tyranny. Uh, it was a Tyranny and Mutation. Uh, this has been out before too, but they went back and put it out as a black vinyl because it had not been uh, out for about a year or two. So, and that's a lot of people like that era of, uh, of Blue Oyster Cult. I got a few CDs to show here too. Junior Marvin, uh, if you saw the new Bob Marley movie, he his, he's featured quite a bit in that film, at least the person playing him. Uh, this is supposed to be a great a uh, new sort of reggae record, and uh, I think the vinyl comes out around mid-April, so no vinyl yet. Kenny Chesney's new album, Born, uh, I don't see any vinyl listed for this. It's just a CD. Uh, hopefully he doesn't misrepresent himself there. Uh, Vinicius Cantu Cantaria, uh, I don't know if that's exactly how you say that, but Psychedelic Rio. So kind of Brazilian, uh, he's on guitar and voice. Um, so anyway, Brazilian music and Motorhead, uh, reissued CD of Overkill. The vinyl came out a little while ago. Uh, so now we get the CD for that. My recommend this week uh, is something that I haven't really looked at in a long time and then I saw there was a vinyl available and then I thought well I better order this because um, somebody's going to want this but I don't know how many people remember this but I love the cover of this album because I think it sort of reflects uh, Pink Floyd's Animals and this band uh, in a way appealed to Pink Floyd fans and David Gilmore so much that they ended up sort of forming a friendship with Gilmore, who then uh, has now since done an album with with them. Uh, but this is uh, The Orb, The Orb's Adventures Beyond the Ultra World. And uh, this is their debut record from 1990. It's kind of in that era when uh, Acid House had sort of taken over the dance clubs of England and it was all about like uh, really high energy type stuff and everybody was getting high on like ecstasy and whatever and this was the record that was the come down afterwards they had rooms that were called chill out rooms where you'd go and just kind of sit and wait for things to wear off and kind of get dreamy and drawn into this kind of music uh Originally formed by Alex Patterson and Jimmy Cotty. They were friends from way back. And uh, Jimmy was part of the KLF, who also had some big hits at the time. And uh, at some point, um, when KLF did the Chill Out album, um, Alex felt a little betrayed by that and so, sort of broke off and uh, kept the orb for his own thing so jimmy is not really on this album at all but it's alex and then a bunch of other sort of friends of his and uh he'd eventually do some work with uh youth from killing joke because he was also a longtime friend and uh youth is quite a famous producer worked with a lot of big british bands but anyway this is sort of like um almost like the equivalent of soundtrack music without being a soundtrack. And in England, they got the full album, which is what this is. It was, it's almost like a two hour album. And in America, initially they wanted to cut it down. So they released a, like a 70 minute CD and then it did well. So they decided later to uh, reissue it as a, as a double CD. 
and put the full thing on it. But so this one has um, the only track that's four minutes long really is the first track, which is Little Fluffy Clouds. And that was uh, sort of a club hit. And it features, it does feature drum beats and uh, it also features spoken word vocals from R Ricky Lee Jones talking about the Arizona sunsets and stuff. And I think that that actually became a bone of contention to where she sort of sued over that or something. But uh, yeah, so that's a very, very dreamy. The rest of the album is just totally dreamy mainly. It kind of mixes a lot of reggae and dub sounds, that kind of like instrumental version of reggae and very slow loping beats with a lot of ambient music too. There's a lot of Brian Eno influence on this and there's a fair amount of Pink Floyd and psychedelic influence on this. So if you've never heard the Orbs Adventures Beyond the Ultra World, uh, you really should go listen to it somewhere if you can find it. UF Orb was their second album and that one's also very good. Uh, the last song is called A Huge Ever-Growing Pulsating Brain That Rules from the Center of the Ultra World Live Mix MK10. And uh, apparently that song originally featured some vocals from Minnie Ripperton, a sample that was eventually removed because they didn't want to get sued. But uh, And this also, because this is the British version, uh, the second record begins with Perpetual Dawn, which was another single from this. But to actually release it as a single, they sort of edited the length down and uh, brought in youth uh, to do sort of a remix and added vocals and it became more of kind of a, a reggae soul type, almost like a soul to soul kind of song. Um, but anyway, yeah. So, but songs like Backside of the Moon, Spanish Castles in Space, Into the Fourth Dimension, Earth, Gaia. Um, I think that one features like some sample from I don't know if it was Flash Gordon or some one of those movies that like um, maybe it was like the black hole or something. I don't know. An actor sort of reciting something ominous. Uh, but they all sort of have this very spacey kind of vibe to them. And uh, trippy, dreamy, a lot of Brian Eno influence, like I mentioned, uh, very sort of uh, ambient type stuff. Really kind of a groundbreaking album. Uh, Pitchfork ended up listing it as the 100th best album of the 1990s and Slant Magazine listed it as the fourth greatest electronic album of the 20th century. So it's very highly praised and that's why I say if you haven't heard it and you're into say David Bowie's Low or something like that, like go listen to this. You need to hear it. Um, all right. And, well, you've got four tracks on there that are between 15 and 20 minutes long each, so it's going to be a long listening session, but it kind of wants to play as one sort of continuous thing that draws you in and then keeps you there. And uh, The Orb have now made like 17 albums, and Alex Patterson is the only original member still at this point. But, uh, but this was kind of like a real groundbreaking, different kind of thing when it came out. Okay. Thanks for watching, guys. I think that's enough for this week. Next week, another big new release week, but it's Easter, so I don't know. We'll see how many things. April 5th is a huge release week, so um, and then it's all on the way to Record Store Day. So thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Have another great week. I'll catch you next time, and uh, enjoy the weather. Hopefully it gets a little warmer. It's pretty cold here today, so doesn't feel like spring yet. <laughs> okay. Take care. Peace. Thanks.